Today on Robert Knows, how do you become an astronaut? Are good grades important? How fit must you be? And how long does it take before astronauts can fly in space? Find out today on Robert Knows. Luca, e tu stai bene? Robert? Here you are, Robert. Who are you talking to? Oh, this is my friend Luca Parmitano. We know each other from the Playmo City Space Center. He was a test pilot, and now he's an astronaut at the European Space Agency, the ESA. A real astronaut? No kidding! Really? Can we say hi? Of course. Luca, meet Bennett and Lisa. Hello, Hello, Mr. Mr. Parmitano. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Bennett. Never mind Mr. Parmitano. Just call me Luca. Robert already told me everything about you. Wow! wow. Mr. Parmitano? Uh, Luca? <laughs> what I've always wanted to know is, how do you become an astronaut? Well, to become an astronaut, there are several paths. The best way is to go to college, become a scientist, a medical doctor or a pilot, even better, a test pilot, and then you can apply for a job with the European Space Agency and become an astronaut. Wow, that's so cool! And what is the training like for astronauts? And how long does it take? Astronauts continually train throughout their lives, but the main training comprises three phases. The basic training, preparatory training, and team training. And then they can fly into space, right? Not quite, Bennett. First of all, astronauts have a lot to learn. For example, they need to know a great deal about science, <laughs> physics, math, and chemistry. Uh -oh. After that, the astronauts learn all the technical details about the International Space Station, ISS, how the airlock works, the oxygen supply, and what you can and cannot do on board the ISS. They also learn a great deal about the supply shuttles that bring them there. It's also important to play a lot of sports. <laughs> because the conditions in space and the rocket launch are very stressful on the body. The main exercise for this is the centrifuge. What is a centrifuge? Well, a centrifuge is a module that spins around and prepares astronauts for the enormous forces that they are subjected to during the launch. The Earth pulls everything around itself. The higher into the sky you fly, the weaker this pull is. In order to fly into space, you must first overcome the Earth's gravitational force. A rocket is strong enough and fast enough to do this but it also accelerates very forcefully, just like in a car or an airplane. Everyone in a rocket notices the acceleration. The difference is that in a rocket, the acceleration is so much greater that astronauts feel as though they are eight times heavier than normal. Wow, that's an awful lot. During the preparatory training, the astronaut then learns everything about the modules and systems of the ISS, how they work and how you can repair them quickly in an emergency. Here, astronauts work very closely with the partner countries of the ESA, the USA, Russia, Japan, and Canada. But after that, astronauts can fly into space, right? Not quite yet. If an astronaut is chosen for a mission, they have to undergo special training for more than 18 months. This is where they learn every detail about their mission. During this phase, the astronauts practice how to work in zero gravity, for example. Zero gravity means that there is no gravitational pull and the astronauts float. Oh, they float? Yep. And you have to practice that. That's why astronauts train in a water tank. Being underwater is a little like being in space. 
Wow, it takes a lot of work if you want to fly into space. That's true, Lisa. The long preparation is necessary to prepare the astronauts for every possible situation in space. Gee, I'd study real hard if it meant I could fly into space. How about you, Luca? Did you want to be an astronaut when you were young? You know, Bennett, um, when I was a child, I think everybody uh, of my generation wanted to be an astronaut. And I was indifferent. I grew up watching movies and watching news of the astronaut going in space again after many years with the space shuttle. So I definitely dreamed about being an astronaut and I was very lucky that I grew up to be one. Cool! One last question please, Luca. What does it really feel like to be weightless? Lisa, that is a fantastic question and it's one that I get all the time. It is really hard to describe being in zero gravity. One way that I like to describe is if you have ever had a dream where you're flying, almost like Peter Pan and his friends when they fly around, you just move everywhere with the touch of a, of a finger. Only, to me, it's a little better than a dream because when you wake up and you are on the International Space Station, you actually are floating, you're actually flying around, so it's even better than a dream. Unbelievable! It sounds magical! It sure does, but I think we've kept Luca from his work for long enough. Oh no! I still have so many questions! What is life like on the ISS? How does the shuttle dock at the station? And is there a space toilet? How does it work? Can you not stay a little longer, Luca? You two guys are really, really curious and have so many questions. How about I call you next week and then I will be able to answer all of your remaining questions about life on board the International Space Station. That would be awesome! Yes, please, Mr. Parmitano. I, I mean, Luca. That would be super interesting. Till then. Ciao, Ciao Luca. Luca. Thank, you, Thank you, so you so much. Wow, I can hardly wait till next week to talk to Luca again. Hey, sis, do you want to play astronauts? 